Hey everyone, Mayor Duckett here. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Mayor's Table. Tis the season for giving. The weather gets colder. It's time to turn your attention to those nonprofits here in our community that need your support so that they can support those people who are in need. So if you're looking to donate time, money, energy, wherever the case may be, or if you're somebody who is in need of help, this is the episode for you. Hey everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Mayor's Table. Today I have two special guests with me because we're going to get in and talk about some nonprofits. And these two are the gurus of nonprofits here in San Juan County. We have Catherine Abeda, who's the Executive Director of the San Juan United Way, and Jen Johnson, who is Deputy Director of San Juan United Way. Thank you for both being here. And I think this is the second time you've been on the show. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. My first. Is it your first, Jen? Good to be here, yes. How have we not had you on here before? You know, I think that you were just saving the best for last. You're the kind of character that we need on this show. You know, Jen. I, I then, love when those words come out of anyone's mouth, put, even whatever context. It puts you both together, and yeah. it is, it's going to be quite the show today. Well, thank you for joining me, as always. And I wanted to take this moment to kind of educate and bring awareness to uh, the immense amount of nonprofits that we have here in the area that as I said kind of earlier off camera, I mean, these are nonprofits who give all year long and we're moving into the season of giving, right? It's coming into the holidays. And this is a time where people really have the urge to give. Maybe they save their time of giving to this time of year. And I think it'd be good for them to know where they can, where they can do that at. And it, it's an interesting component of what San Juan United Way does. And I want to get kind of some of the FAQ type top of mind questions that people may have about your organization, the way that it operates within communities. Um, but you have the ability to kind of be a clearinghouse of sorts for local giving because you represent so many different or you're partnered with so many different nonprofits here in San Juan County. What, tell us about it. Yeah, that's that's true. So the main the main way we act as a clearinghouse is we we come into different workplaces. Um, we campaign to individuals all around the community to present an option for payroll deductions. Um, it's the simplest, easiest way to give, um, but of course you could give in any any way you want. But what it does is it allows you to choose exactly where you wanna give your gift. So, um, and it give, you get to choose exactly how much, how often, um, and it's just, a quick easy way to help and give back to the community either the greatest needs of the community or if you have a nonprofit um, in particular in mind we'll give a hundred percent directly to that nonprofit so that's the first frequently asked question what you just said there hundred percent to the nonprofit so one of the things that comes up when people are talking about giving to you know I've got a list here of the nonprofits but the, the question about San Juan United Way is well if I give a dollar how much of that dollar is actually going to the nonprofit that I want it to go to What's the answer to that, Catherine? Catherine, Jen? <laughs> it's one of uh, my favorite questions to answer because we're one of the few United Ways um, really that's able to say 100% of what you give goes to the nonprofit you chose, whether it's a direct nonprofit or whether you choose to give to our community fund, which um, is then decided by a group of community members and donors later in the year to decide where how that money is to be dispersed so no matter how you choose to give a hundred percent of every dollar you give goes to a nonprofit program and we're able to do that because of the generosity of local companies here in san juan county that underwrite our costs every single year so that we can keep the lights on at our office we can print the pledge forms pays our salaries all the things that go into running our campaign doing the work and then um, funding all the programs at the end are already paid for um, by our community so it's really it's it's a gift the way i see it this tool is a gift for the nonprofits to use because there's no cost to them um, so people can know then that the dollar that they give is not being distributed to the CEO of San Juan United Way? Correct. Right? It's not going to political campaigns of, of anybody Correct. they would choose not to give a political campaign donation to themselves? We stay out of that completely. That's smart. I like that. Um, and then, well, I think that's, I mean, and, and then, of course, you make it easy for people in regards to the, 
you know, the ability to give weekly through paycheck, mm-hmm. you know, EFTs basically, right? Mm-hmm. And really, that's also a tool that nonprofits could use as well. And so if they have, for example, a board of directors who um, work at different workplaces and they want to figure out, should we throw a giant fundraiser or maybe should we get each board member's workplace to hold a campaign and offer that opportunity to those employees to give, and some of that's going to end up hopefully coming back to you, especially if you do that work to educate that business or whatnot about what you do so that they know, oh, wow, I really want to get behind that, or I love that, and he's probably going to do that. I'm going to go over here. <laughs> so it's kind of like the, the Burger King of fundraising, you know? Like, it's how you want it. So you tell oh. us what you want, and we'll make it happen. Oh, my gosh. You just used the Burger <laughs> King did. of fundraising. I did. I know. That is That's quite so the marketing It came live. It's there. not something I, love I had it. in the pocket, but it is. I love yeah, that you can do it, it your way. Yeah, right? you I mean, stop it when you want it. Start it when you want it. So this, this, is, this is a great segue because I, I want what I want to do with this episode is encourage people to give. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank and you. I, and I want to talk <laughs> about, and I'm going to go through this list, and, and we'll hit on these, these different charities because they touch so many different parts of this community mm-hmm. um, that I don't, I, I mean, I, and I, hopefully we have the most comprehensive list that we can find because I, I hate to leave anybody out of this. But I know as somebody who actually sits on that committee that actually helps deliver or decide where those community funds go to, mm-hmm. um, I know of these. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say them, okay? Yes. Echo Food Bank, Child Haven, uh, People Assisting the Homeless, mm-hmm. the SAS, Sexual Assault Services of Northwest New Mexico, mm-hmm. Navajo United Methodist or New Beginnings, um, Desert Family Counseling, the Boys and Girls Clubs, which not just Farmington, but Bloomfield and Aztec, yes. right? And then in Kirtland, we have the Kirtland Youth Association, so uh, Family Crisis Center, Total Behavioral Health, Presbyterian Medical Services, Red Cross, Northwest New Mexico Seniors, DNA Legal Services, um, big brothers, big sister, and then Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Mm-hmm. I think that's, and then of course, you also assist with though, San Juan County Partnership, Salvation Army, Catholic Charities, Children's Hope Foundation, and First Tee, and the Four Corners Home for Children. And probably a hundred or so or more. Just a name. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Just think about the number of people involved in all of those different nonprofits. That oh that's my their the whole purpose, their whole mission is to support some segment of of our community, some group of people, individuals who need help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you think of they don't, we don't want them wasting their time fundraising. We want them to do what they're good at. We'll do that for them. So that's the idea. You know, like mm-hmm. you do that essential service that no one else can do. And we'll try to keep you running. Yeah, and try to stir up some more opportunity for good. And, you know, especially like what you're saying right now, there's an opportunity to give and it's on the top of people's mind, especially people who are involved in a nonprofit they care about. This is a way that they can they can engage people within their circles to give back to a cause that they care about. And so it takes the work that Jen and I do on a daily basis to go around and stir up that good for the programs you just listed and others. But if everyone's doing it a little bit, then a lot more nonprofits are gonna get a lot more donations to them and we're gonna get a lot more help um, to the people who need it most. I'm interested in the fact that last year, so the year ending 2020, my gosh, we're almost at the end of 21, the average, wage or average take-home dollar for the average American actually went up. Did you see that correspond in giving in 2020? Did you see an increase in giving as people's salaries went up? Interesting. I, I don't know if we saw a correlation in the salary increase because we don't, we don't get salary info necessarily with sure. the donation. But what we can say is that the donations were steady last year. They didn't go down. And we worried that they would, you know, that was the big worry is that COVID and that we're going to lose donations and um, it didn't. So uh, maybe. That's, well, that's good news. Yeah. I mean, I, the fact that you just say they were steady, you were still able to give as you've been able to give in the mm-hmm. past. Um, and I'm, I'm hopeful as we see an uptick in activity here locally through you know our local economy and of course here in the county, oil and gas is making a big comeback right now that we could see additional funds coming into the organization because it only benefits you know, the outreach of these groups. So 
I think that's good news for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, last year, when COVID hit, we really relied on San Juan United Way to kind of help this community. A, if I needed help, what's the number that I can call if I'm if I need help? And we set up the hotline through San Juan United Way for those people who need help. And that could have been with rent, that could have been with food, that could have been with child care, that could have been whatever. We also set up the line, the how to help line mm -hmm. for individuals who wanted to donate or wanted fun. to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, do we still have those two lines open? In essence, so we've just sort of moved out of the kind of triage mode of, you know, having to funnel everything to one, one, I guess, phone number. And now there's a little bit more structure behind the program. So um, San Juan College um, has been doing a lot with the Volunteer Center and um, the city of Farmington has done a lot with their volunteer management center. And so there's a lot more organized um, efforts going on behind the scenes, I think, now um, to get more people to volunteer. And so that's something that we're um, it's not really put on a line anymore, but we have a lot more places to send people. Now. That's great. If somebody wanted to, to get more information on that, is there a number they can call? Just go to the San Juan United Way website. Uh, yes. And for volunteering, I mean, it's obviously a little bit of a trickier time of year. Um, not time of year. I'm sorry. Time in, in general for <laughs> volunteering because it's, it's tough. There are because we would usually like this time to gather wish list items for homebound seniors or do day of caring projects and that sort of thing. We just have to make sure that whatever we do is is an acceptable format. So everything is a little bit more restricted right now, but um, we're going to really use the like the Martin Luther King Day of Service uh, that they put together is a really nice consolidated way to sort of keep the day of caring concept alive because they put it all into that one day and try to identify as many projects as they can. Uh, but on a rolling basis, there are generally things to do. So we can't guarantee that we could find a project for 50 you know, high school students at one time. But we love trying to find something because there are a lot of needs. And that is another beautiful way to give. So um, those day of caring projects have made huge differences for these agencies. Sure. Um, Aztec Boys and Girls Club, I know right now, actually wants to try to build a wall where they have a window that is um, it's just got a huge draft and it stays really cold and it's where all the kids come in and so it's little things like that that can really um, help a lot as well so that's good information mm -hmm. the other thing we've grown on now is with San Juan County they have created the uh, wellness resource center yes. and so I know we wanted to make sure we mentioned on here and this is for mental health uh, purposes correct I mean that's really an umbrella term but it's it's really, I mean, they, they do a lot of what, they, they do a lot of the work that we 2 on one and United Way do and are seeing when people call us looking for help. So a lot of what they're seeing is um, somebody is either brought in, referred there, or calls and says, this is my problem. Um, I'm about to be evicted, say, and here's my situation. And they just give as much details as they have and they can. And then they have a peer mentor. And that concept is one that um, I think is, is really going to be very successful in our community where they go through and on an individual basis help that person knock down the barriers that are standing in that person's way to get to the next level whatever whatever access they are having a hard time with um, and and really trying to just instead of just giving them um, like a phone number or say go talk to so-and-so really trying to move move that needle for them sure and so um, they've been an excellent partner and so the mental, the mental wellness resource center. I think the term makes makes you think maybe it's, I don't know. Mental wellness might sound a little light, but really, I think it it's anything. I mean, I mean anything. People who are struggling finding food, people who are struggling finding um, housing, um, struggle accessing medication or a doctor, um, don't have a driver's license, so can't access the path or something like that there's just all kinds of obstacles and hurdles that are popping up in people's lives all around where it's one or two obstacles that maybe don't even that prevent them from even being able to qualify for a program that does exist that we help fund and that could help them and so this is sort of um this is a step before um for a lot of people that's a really good synopsis Thanks. what they do yeah. <laughs> i just we just think the world yeah, of think, them well i think it'd be great probably to have a sh have sue on here and talk yeah. more as well as i think uh 
Jen, you mentioned their one year anniversary uh, yes. is coming up, so or, or has come up, and it, it'd probably be good to get more information out there. But uh, I know, Catherine, you've got a little bit of contact information there. Yes. For the Wellness Center, and we can certainly put it on the screen. But would you mind just kind of reading it out loud? Yes. So if you need to contact somebody for. Um, any kind of assistance, their phone number is 505-636-7110. Or you can visit them at 814 West Maple in Farmington. Can you go on to the your website and get the listing of all the nonprofits? Are they available on your website? The ones we went over today? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So on our website, we'll ha we have a list of our partner agencies and um there's a lot of cool information about all of them so i think it's really cool to check out but then it also has lists of other nonprofits in the community that have received designations from us in the past so there's tons of agencies there um it's not necessarily all inclusive because there could be some nonprofits out there that haven't been um, we haven't given a donation to yet but um we can certainly we'd love to add to that list so. sure if you had to say going into holidays of 2021 if there was you know a particular need or a nonprofit that is really needing support right now um, for a need in this community is there a single one that you can think of or a group of them that are providing a particular service that you've recognized based on phone calls that you're getting and contacts from within the community that you know they're they're being stretched thin and they could really use some resources besides all of them yeah, besides all of them. Well, one thing I know right now is that Echo Food Bank, um, are they're looking for turkeys from individuals this year. And they, they do that every year, but they also usually expect um, a large amount to be donated. And this year that's not going to be happening. And so they really are relying on the community to um, – to, to help provide that and fill that need this year. And they're, I, I'm not sure what the problem is, but- Is it a food supply chain I think it's issue? a supply chain and cost issue um, to where it's just not gonna get to happen this year. So that's a way that I think community members can help because that ends up being a supply chain issue here locally when there's a lot of people and a lot of families who are gonna be relying on the food bank to feed their families over the holiday. And if the food bank doesn't have it, then that come, that come there's the, no, the chain problem. So. Um, Jen, any, you can, any, any particulars you can think of? Oh, goodness. I would probably go along the same lines. I mean, they're just really the hardest time right now, I feel like, is, is for the emergency services. Yes. Um, because it's just that desperate right now. And I hate to think what could come in the future um, as far as the need. So getting ahead of it mm -hmm. would be phenomenal. So anyone that is doing some sort of emergency food or shelter, mm -hmm. if we can help them by, if they do have like a freezer that's broken that can help them to store more or um, get them new beds that needed to be replaced and don't allow for that many more places to sleep, you know, those sorts of things. Um, I think that that's going to have to be the focus right now because <clears throat> we can't quite get to the next step without without catching that safety net first. No, that's a good point. It's going to be an interesting holiday season the next couple months knowing what we know of the supply chain issues. And um, so any anything that anybody can do here extra for somebody else, we certainly welcome that opportunity. And plenty of places to go to to do that and uh, echo food bank particularly is you know my my kids have, have volunteered there i've volunteered there i mean they're always looking for individuals to help with their food drives mm -hmm. uh we've had a couple of big ones at berg park in the parking lot uh during the during the covid year well uh, covid years now <laughs> um so very good information um anything else you want to make sure that people are aware of right now if anybody's interested in holding a drive or anything like that we'll have there's information on our website where um you know to give you ideas if you want to hold a hygiene drive what are the items needed and what are the agencies that need these items um if at work you'd like to hold a drive for you know the domestic violence shelter we'll we'll there you know we want to get people thinking and if you know, if you want to do it with a group or you want to do it by yourself or just with your family, there's, you know, there, there's wish list ideas, um, but then also just how to start a drive, how to do that you're on, on your own. And um, so a lot of little things like that on trying to get, just trying to help people get more involved and make it real easy to start on your own. And you don't have to involve us, but we're always available if you have any questions or just need any assistance. Um, we we want to help give 
get more people involved in stirring up the good in the community. So whatever mm-hmm. we can do to be of assistance in that. And not only speaking to, uh, you know, potential givers, but on the nonprofit sector, too, if you do something in the community that you want to make sure that we know about, or you know of someone that does something incredible, or you are an agency that needs support in some way that maybe is falling through the cracks, like, let us know. We would love to draw attention to it um, and help find support for you. Mm -hmm. And on the website as well, you can get that workplace campaign. So if you do want to hold, um, you know, workplace campaign, which I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank all of our current workplace campaigns, especially those who just keep on running without even hearing anything from me. Um, You guys have been holding up our community and thank you so much. Um, So if you'd like to become a part of that awesome team, (laughs) it is on the website. There's just like a short form that will say, yes, I would be interested in doing this. And don't feel any pressure. If you think that there's two people in your organization that might want to do it, or you just want one of us to come out and talk to your employees about you know the needs of the community just to make them aware um, any of that is phenomenal even local businesses you can just support us at the corporate level so that we can try to reach farther and farther out um, so any type of support is is welcome and very much appreciated very good message thank Jen. you thank you sir very astute at that thank you well, listen, I just want to make sure, you know, for all of our all of our community members, I mean, it's that time of year to take care of your neighbors. Um, you know, I've seen some great posts out there on Facebook or next door of individuals, you know, looking for opportunities or, or doing kind things for those people, you know, within their immediate neighborhoods. And I think that's an important component of, of being a great community, coming together, finding finding those in need and, and supporting them when you can. And more than ever, we need to open up our hearts and our doors to that. Um, whether it's giving monetarily, whether it's giving of time, whether it's sharing of food, uh, whether it's teaching somebody, you know, something. Let me teach you how to cook a meal. Mm-hmm, Let me, mm-hmm. whatever your passions may be, there's opportunities in, you know, throughout Farmington and San Juan County where you can do that. Uh, start a YouTube channel. Uh, you know, inspire a movement. Yeah, you know, do yeah. something that would really bring people together. And I, I think, uh, I think this is the time of year to get it done. So. We spent plenty of time sharing our frustrations, so we do. Let's share a little love this yeah. season. I would love to it's see. It's very that. contagious. I agree. Yes. Uh, well, you're both doing a great job, and uh, certainly, many people don't know this, but it, you're you're advocate advocating for individuals in regards to their electricity bills as well. Uh, we've had those conversations, so even on that end, trying yeah, to get people connected you. to the state fund to help uh, pay for their electricity bills, I really appreciate your work on that as well. Yeah, we just try. We're we stay really busy, and we just try to see what are the what are the needs most pressing in our community, and how can we as community members kind of rally together to get those solved. So I appreciate everything that that we get to do, and I appreciate you guys getting to or you guys having us come on here so we could talk about this. Well, I'd say one of the things I think is great, Catherine and Jen, is that you've both been so long as I, as an elected official, you all have been at the United Way. Mm-hmm. And when there's consistent leadership in any organization, you know, I'm a big believer in the good to great philosophy. When we get that flywheel going and it's rolling, it takes consistent leadership behind that wheel. And because you both have been there, I think it's done a lot of good for for our community. So thank Thank you. you. You're not getting rid of us anytime soon. All right. Sounds good. (laughs) Thanks. Yes. Well, thank you both for being here. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Mayor's Table. It is the time of giving. Uh, Lots of great events and opportunities out there for you to get involved with here locally. Uh, We encourage you to give in in any way that you can. And certainly if you're in need of help, the San Juan United Way is a great resource center for you, kind of a clearinghouse for whatever it is that uh, that you may need. Get in touch with these uh, fantastic individuals, and I'm sure they will set you on the path forward. So thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you here next time on the Mayor's Table.